Um, his second question is quite interesting. As you know that the nisab, the threshold of uh, the position which requires paying the zakah if you maintain it for a complete lunar year is certain amount of gold versus certain amount of silver. The 85 gram of gold versus 595 gram of silver. So his question is, which type should I consider in the calculation of my position? Because they vary. I definitely agree. I mean, if I have cash, which is enough to buy 595 gram of silver. But if I want to buy gold, it would only buy 83 gram of gold. It is lesser than the gold nisab. Does it mean that I'm exempt from paying zakah? Because it is not equivalent to the 85 gram of gold? No. Whichever lesser nisab we go by, because this is beneficial for the poor. This is number one. Number two, we want to keep in mind, brothers and sisters, when we deal with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we're not dealing with an employer because he's paying us that much within in the contract that you're supposed to work from eight to five and you will get paid three grands, seven grands, whatever. So people do exactly, they go by the book. And if they are asked to do anything extra, I say, no, it is not in the contract. Dealing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should be completely different than dealing with humans. Allah the Almighty is most generous to us. He granted life, He granted provision, He is our sustainer. So when we give the zakah, the mandatory zakah or the voluntary charity, we should not go by the calculator and become very meticulous and very particular. Like somebody says, Sheikh, here is my zakah. It is $997 and he's bringing $997. Oh, wow. Very accurate. Would it hurt you to make them a thousand to wrap them up? It's only three bucks. No big deal. But this is my zakah. Would you like Allah to deal with you like that? You know, when there is a margin of, you know, an, an error could be extra, could be less. Uh, maybe I have forgotten to pay this. I have forgotten to calculate that. Give extra. Why give extra? Whatever you spend of a thing, anything that you spend, Allah is fully aware of it. And whatever you spend of a thing, He will replace it for you. He will give you better than what you have spent. And He is the best of all providers. So please, when we deal with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do not look at the poor as he's a beneficiary and on the upper hand. Look at you are the needy person. You're giving this to Allah, hopefully that he will accept. That's why the companions of the Prophet comprehended this meaning so some of them would put perfume on the charity, on the money that would be given to the poor. And another would say, welcome the beggar, say, marhaban biman jaa yahmilu zadi ila jannah he would perceive that the beggar or the recipient or the beneficiary is doing him a favor because he came to carry his load and his provision to paradise.